Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing. Thomas, how are you doing today? I am doing really good. That's great. Uh, we're going to be looking at some Ping Iron Models today. They have five of their latest offerings here. We're going to have you test them out. We're going to discuss the differences. We're really going to go kind of through to the different categories. We've got game improvement in the G410. We've got player's distance in the I500. Kind of do player's cavity with the I210 and the iBlade, and then we'll really get into muscle back blade with the blueprint. And we'll just kind of discuss the differences in performance and what golfers might see. We'll look at the loft, we'll look at offset, we'll look at everything. Um, and we'll just kind of give golfers a little bit of an education on the different models. Sounds like a good plan. Well, let's get after it. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, we'll start with the G410, and we'll kind of work our way up from sort of game improvement to like player's blade, which will be the blueprint here. So. Um, we'll just kind of, you know, take a look and see how the difference is comparing on um, TrackMan for, you know, spin, launch, everything we would usually compare in a test. Yep. Yeah, we'll just keep to kind of one brand, just go ping all the way yeah. kind of through, test five different heads out, like you said, from game improvement all the right. way to, to come on the player's iron. Yeah, I mean, we'll really find out why manufacturers offer four or five plus different iron models because that's how different golfers are, you know. Every swing's different, every swing's going to fit differently into each iron model. So we'll just, uh, we'll explain a little bit to the golfers what they're gonna get from G410, what they're gonna get from I210, Blueprint, etc. Yep, sounds good. So when we're testing, all gonna be standard lie. Uh, I've got the Dynamic Gold 120S300 shaft. Okay. Um, this shaft, we're using this one because the Ping Blueprint is a fixed fitting head, so we can't okay. change that head out. So that's the oh, exact okay. same shaft there. Got that's it, okay. Testing that one. All right, so let's get after it. miss it. Eh. That was a good miss it. <laughs> <laughs> miss hits it and it's just like dead straight, like four yards short. I Three, don't, not even. I don't think my miss hit with the uh, blueprint would have been quite no. as good as no. that one. You yep. would see a different, you would see a major difference there. <laughs> but it felt solid. That was a really high ball speed. Nice. 199.9 total. Yeah, well, um, uh, dead Thomas, straight. the first thing I noticed out of pretty much all of those was how dead straight the ball flight was on almost all of them. Uh, yep. I mean, you got, just by looking at dispersion, you got three right by the center line and then a couple more with a face a little bit open, but it wasn't necessarily the curvature of the ball, it was just kind of the face a little bit open. But, I mean, the ball flight was about dead straight every time. You even had one miss where you thought, and right away, you, I anticipated something yeah. more like 180 <laughs> yards or something, and it was your big miss that you uh, were animated about was like three yards shorter than the other ones. So yeah, it was I, with the rest of them. So <laughs> yeah, it's with the rest of yeah. them. So uh, that's the G410. The I mean, G410, that's going to be yeah. forgiveness. It's going to be um, you know straighter ball flight. You're not going to be able to work it as much if you're trying to do that. But it's I mean dead straight. It's going to hold the line. It's uh, that's what you're going to get out of a forgiving game improvement iron like that. Yeah, I mean, this particular model, I wouldn't play out on the golf course in competition. Uh, I'm, I, I like to work the ball right to left, left mm -hmm. to right. Maybe I don't need to hit my 7 iron 200 yards. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's a nice forgiving club for someone that may be looking for a little bit added help, a little added insurance that on their miss hits, things still going to do pretty, do, do pretty well, essentially. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, someone like you who strikes it solid, um, and does like, like you said, work the ball and maybe shape shots, control your trajectory, will not get the benefits of that out of the G410, but someone, like you said, who might miss the center of the face a few times um, and still wants the performance, someone who maybe needs help getting the ball into the air off the turf, this is a club that's built to do just that and then keep it straight on a consistent flight path as well. So, yep. um, like you saw uh, on those shots there. A little larger model from kind of heel to toe, Give me a little more offset that I'm, what I'm looking down at is so it's gonna essentially help me hit the ball a little bit straight. It could be yeah. a little more time to get that club face squared up at impact. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. And then in terms of loft, we should also note 30 degrees in the standard seven iron for the G410. So that's gonna be a little bit less than well, less than all, all of the models we're gonna see, but half a degree less than our next one here, which is the I500. Okay, so hit the next one then. 
You said, what, well, half a degree weaker than the yep. G410, right? 30 and a half degrees for this one. All right, that All right. one was a little bit of a miss at that one, but still was pretty good. Yeah, the i500 is, you know, it's not, uh, it's kind of in between what you'd say is a game improvement in the players. You've got that player's distance category, so a hollow design. So it's gonna give you that distance still, but then I think what we noticed is a little bit more workability that is there too. And I know you like to hit that draw. We saw the draw show up a little bit here um, and a few of those shots, but that's kind of the big difference is you're still gonna get the distance, um, but then there might be sacrificing a little bit of forgiveness for a little bit more workability for those golfers that still do wanna work the ball a little bit, control their trajectory, but still want that distance um, that you might get out of a game improvement iron. Yeah, it, it's exactly that. It's a little smaller club head look down at, mm -hmm. maybe more of what I like to look down as opposed to a little larger game improvement iron. Yeah. Biggest thing I noticed was the spin. So. This model here was actually spinning less than the G410 was. Even though the G410 has less loft on it, mm. the i500 went further because it had less spin on it. Got it. Okay. So half a degree loft difference. Yeah. You expect, you know, half a degree loft maybe that the G410 would go a little bit further. This model was spinning a little bit less. So that's yeah. why it was going a little bit further. And I was able to actually turn it over just a little bit right to mm. left as well as opposed to with the 410, it was just going very high and just right. dead straight every single time. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, the i500 is going to be for the, the players who, you know, strike the ball pretty solid, um, that do want to, you know, if they need to hit a big slice or hook, maybe can work the ball a little bit that direction, but they do still miss the center of the face once in a while and are going to need some performance when that happens. And I think the hollow head design, i500 will provide that still and that distance that they would get out of the game improvement. Uh, G410 type of, of model there. So that's yep. what you're going to see out of those two. There's, I mean, yeah, as we look on the dispersion, this, the distance is pretty similar. Uh, I think, you get, but you're able to draw and kind of move that ball right to left a little bit more with the i500, which kind of resulted in a little bit more distance um, as well. And then, like you mentioned, the spin differences too. Correct, yeah. And then club head wise, you know, looking down at it, it is significantly smaller than say, the 410 would be. Yeah little smaller sole as well. The 410 is going to be a little bit larger, a little more forgiving, get for that turf interaction. And then offset, you know, less offset than the, the 410 would sure. also have as well too. Yep. So Absolutely. it actually looks like a pretty good, pretty good iron to look down at too. So it's got a little bit of hidden technology built into, the, into this yeah. club. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's get to kind of our player's cavity um, section here with the I-210. That was a better swing. So I-210 is at 33 degrees of loft in the seven iron. So uh, we should expect, you know, a little bit less distance, but um, I know we did see some more, uh, you know, right to left ball flight. Uh, so more workability there, but that's what you're gonna get again on the player's cavity shape. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I love to be able to work the ball. Um, I talked about my fourth shot being, uh, being atrocious yeah. there. You know, fourth shot was, it was pretty far left over there. So I had a couple that I did pull a little bit more. I've got those three shots that were very, very yeah. accurate and did exactly what I wanted to, but it didn't quite have as much forgiveness with regards to, um, for example, the G410, when I hit that one-handed swing, I felt like that was right. a bad swing and it still did the same thing. Yeah. So that's kind of a little difference, uh, workability, but probably not quite as forgiving as 410 would be. Exactly, I mean, in terms of forgiveness on that miss, you know, it missed out to the left and I think you knew right away that it was not gonna be kind of where you wanted it, but it's worth noting that this has more forgiveness than say the blueprint will, because in terms of distance on that miss, it still turned out okay. Um, and it, you're not like in jail necessarily, whereas um, if you were to maybe hit that shot um, with the blueprint here or something coming up, uh, you might see a staggering miss 
compared to what we saw here. So that's the kind of, you know, with the I-210, it's going to be more catered towards the workability and the player's type of iron and hitting the ball solid to yep. work the ball. But if you are to miss the center of the face, you will get, still get some of that forgiveness that you might see kind of in the thicker iron um, compared to, you know, the blade, the eye blade or the blueprint that you'll have after this. We also touched on consistency with the I-210 yeah. um, in our last kind of player's cavity model um, that we just did a video yep. on. If we look at this screen right here, we'll notice this line. Yeah. Even though those ones were left, notice how they went the same distance every single time. So yep. it was consistently going the right distance every single time. I believe it was spinning about 6,100 on average. Yeah. There was one that, yeah. the one miss that, that was um, left did spin less. But the other four were spinning a little bit more mm -hmm. just because there's a little bit more loft on the club. It's going to give you a little bit of stopping power on the green. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of what you're going to see is the I-210 is kind of in the middle of like the I-500 and then the next two irons we're going to have, which are more blade type, um, really small head, uh, workable players irons. So um, like with that, we can start to the, get to the I blade. It's kind of similar to the I-210, just has a little bit of a smaller or guys, not as deep of a cavity. Yeah, a little um, smaller sole, a little bit. Players like that turf interaction getting through the bowl there with that smaller head. Nice. Well, we had one extra degree of loft in the eye blades, a little bit weaker, but um, I guess here you're hitting it so solid that it really, you it couldn't really, even tell the difference. It didn't go any, I think it went about the exact same distance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the That's only thing right. I could notice the difference with this head was, if anything, is slightly thinner top line. Otherwise, yeah. it looks exactly like the 210 looking down at it. Yeah, I mean, and even looking at the back of them, uh, they look pretty similar. It's just that the eye blade has a little bit, um, it's not quite as deep of that cavity there. But they both have that elastomer in there for the feel. Um, and they both, you know, it. they look very similar. And they played very similar for you here. Yeah, uh, it did. If anything, Saul was just a little touch smaller. Top line was just a little bit smaller. Yeah. Offset was basically identical to yeah. what, what I was seeing with the two tens. So these yep. two clubs are very, very, very similar. This is just designed, what, one degree less, sorry, yeah. one degree more loft. Yes. And then also maybe just a little bit more workable. Yeah. Um, it felt really good. I mean, I hit those five swings really, really good. Probably the best five swings that I've made mm -hmm. today. Um, yeah. Basically going the exact same distance as the 210. No, no major difference. Yeah. No jumpers, no nothing yeah. that, like that. So. I think uh, the, I mean, they're very similar. The difference is I think you'd see a little bit more forgiveness on the I-210. Um, and then, like you said, a little bit smaller construction maybe with the top line and the eye blade might present a little bit more workability for golfers. But, I mean, the differences aren't going to be huge based on, you know, the shots that uh, you hit there. Yeah, I mean, you try and categorize players. You know, we think there's two guys on tour. I think Victor Hoffman, he plays the 210, correct? Yeah. So even he plays a carry yeah. back. Obviously, you'd say maybe a blade would be more designed towards a more of a player versus the, the 210, but anyone where you can play both of them yeah. you know, at the end of the day. Um, I wouldn't recommend this to someone as, say, a 20 handicapper, right. but at the same time, if you want to work the bull, you, know, you could probably get away with playing. This isn't a full-on blade like we're probably about to hit here. Yeah. Um, right. So it's definitely workable. Workable. Um, yeah. Got a little bit of forgiveness in there, too. I hit them pretty good. Yep. Absolutely. Well. Let's get to that, uh, the blueprint. All right. I know it's kind of the scariest one for you to hit. <laughs> um, I know I'm ter terrified of ever hitting that club. Yeah, every time I pick it up, I always put my hand on it, and it's like my hand just... <laughs> it just, just wraps all gone. the way around it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs>
All right, five shots with the blueprint. What do you think? I mean, that is a super small club head to hit, so. Yeah, it's very small, minimal if nothing on the offset. It's basically straight from the hosel yeah. straight down there, so. Small, my ball striking wasn't up for it till today. You can see my dispersion got larger with this one. So you can see that mm -hmm. that orange circle was larger than both the blue and the purple. Yeah. So interesting that but, that occurred. Uh, I mean, that's part of it too. I mean, when you have a club that's more workable and that's gonna, you know, I guess punish you more for your miss hits, you're gonna get that little bit where um, there's more variation there in the dispersion in terms of left to right, stuff like that. But um, that thing is so tiny to hit. And so, I mean, it's all about being precise, hitting the center of the face. And if you don't, um, you know, you're gonna be punished for it as a golfer. But at the same time, if you do like to work the ball, I know you like to work the ball and you do play a muscle back type of iron, then you're gonna get those rewards of, you know, creating that draw that you wanna hit, creating that low fade that you wanna hit, creating whatever kind of shot you like to hit. You're gonna be able to accomplish that easier if you hit the ball solid um, in the center of the face with an iron like the blueprint. Yeah, feel, you know, I can definitely notice a huge difference yeah. in feel playing this being forged versus the others kind of be more cast. Yeah. Um, it feels a lot softer off the face. Yeah. The I sound, like that feel, yeah. You could definitely tell it the sound too. That was much softer and more quiet in sound yep. compared to the rest uh, of the models we tested. Yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy people away from it. Um, I, you know, I'd say your shorter irons, for sure, you could have the goal, kind of maybe yeah. make it more kind of like a combo kind of set. You know, if you want to play Blueprint, go ahead. You know, I would say, you know, it's not going to be near as forgiving as what you may find with these other kind of four yeah. models that we've got here. Um, but if you're, all you're after is wanting great feel, great workability, if you're a great bull striker, this is a, it's a great option. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, I mean, those, that's the type of iron that I know you play. The um, players that are hitting the ball solid, like you said, in the center of the face nearly every time are going to get the benefits that they want out of a blade or out of something like the blueprint. Um, it's, you know, the players like me who might miss the center of the face um, might need to look at the, you know, I-500 or the I-210 iBlade or G-410 because um, as we mentioned, those are the more forgiving options and then depending on your player characteristics, um, you'd be able to fit into one of those models. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, so I hit five shots with each club. I haven't taken out any of the, any of the miss hits or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, let's just pay attention to some of the numbers that we like to look at in a kind of club fitting environment. I'm gonna break all these down since I didn't take anything out and just want to, so we can kind of expand and take, yep. a, take a look. Uh, I tried to be as unbiased as possible, try to swing the same speed every single time. I did a pretty good job. Yeah. Basically plus or minus half a mile an hour, which is, which is pretty good, uh, almost robotic. Um, if we look at ball speed, so let's take a look at the two that had the uh, lowest amount of loft on them. We look at G410 and I500, notice the ball speed was a little bit higher with those yep. particular models. Uh, it would be to expect it because there's less loft on those sure. Um If we look at the other three, you notice they're kind of hovering around at 128 to about 130 miles an hour, so a little bit less. Interesting with the eye blade that I hit this eye blade, uh, 130.5. So it was a little bit more ball speed compared to the Blueprint, which has also got the same amount of loft on it. So they both got 34 degrees mm -hmm. and also had more ball speed than uh, one that has 33 degrees loft yeah. on it. So the I 210 is 33 degrees. So interesting that I hit the eye blade really, yeah. really solid across the board. Um, smash factor with the two, you can say distance, game improver and iron, irons essentially um, was higher. When you have less yeah. loft, you swing the same you get more ball speed, so the smash factor right. was higher with those. Um, the reason why the I-500 did go just a little bit further was it was it had a little bit more ball speed and also the spin rate was just slightly lower than the sure. G410. So interesting there to, to kind of note. You notice with the I-500 and the G410, spin rate kind of 53, 5500. We look at the other three, notice they were hovering around about 6,000 RPMs. Yeah. Directly, once again, related to spin um, the more loft that, sorry, the, yeah, the more loft on the club, the more spin that's yeah. going to be usually going to be created. So interesting there. If we take a look at those numbers, um, if we look at carry distance, we will notice the highest carry was actually the I-500, 193 go 199, um, pretty far seven iron. Yeah, not bad. Um, 
it was spinning the lowest of them all. It was also flying the highest of them all. So I was getting away with it. So even though I had less spin, stopping power was still six yards because the ball mm. was flying 134 feet in the air. Mm. So I had plenty of land, steep landing angle and height sure. to get that ball to stop on the green. Um, if we look at the top, uh, the bottom end, the blueprint was going the least amount of distance, about 180 yards, you know, about 186 essentially. Yeah. Which is very, very, basically I'm about a 180 yard carry with my seven iron. So my, 30, my seven iron has 34 degrees left. Yep. It's basically the exact same numbers with, with, with those there too. So really interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, if we take a look at the dispersion pattern, I do, the one thing that just definitely stands out to me, there's a couple of circles that were a little bit smaller than a couple of the other ones. Yeah. Um, obviously the blue stands out, it's the smaller circle of them all. That was the ping eye blade. Yeah. Um, so I hit that really, really solid. Uh, you'll notice if we look at the largest circle, it was the ping blueprint. So that was kind of the least forgiving yeah. model out there. I'm not surprised by that. I had a couple of miss hits in there. Noticeably that one that's just kind of short right. You might mm -hmm. get punished a little if I don't quite catch it in the sure. middle of the face. Um, but it's also important to look at how straight I hit the G410. Mm -hmm. G410 was basically flying straight every single time. I've got four, one, two, three, four white dots that were basically on the center right, line yep. there. One I left the face a little bit open on, but we'll notice how straight those four shots were. Mm -hmm. So that's always interesting to note. Yeah. Um, with the I-500, even though it went the furthest, you'll notice, kind of had one kind of way out the left, one out to the right. When the ball is spinning less, it is a little bit harder to control. Mm -hmm. So that's why that one maybe was a little bit harder to control. I had three great ones, but then yeah. I had a couple that were kind of wide yeah. left and right. So. Yeah. And then uh, one thing I wanted to look at too on here was the curvature of the shots because um, I, I know. Get it for you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't know. I was I'll bring up there. the curvature up for you here. Here we go. I didn't know it was not up there yet. It is now. Okay. okay. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you can look at at this, and we can to look at even the ping I two ten a little bit more curvature. But some of the I wanted to touch the G four ten. You're talking about how straight you're hitting it, and it's the lowest amount of curve, you know, per shot uh, up there. I just wanted to look at that because I remember watching your G four ten shots. It seemed like every single one was dead straight. Um, very little curve, if any, on every single one. Yep. And then really the only one that had any curve on it was the one that you kind of a little bit left out to the right. But those four that were right near the center were um, pretty much dead straight. And I think that speaks to the forgiveness and the playability that it offers for maybe those ball strikers that don't catch the center every time, um, but do want to get that extra lift and then um, that forgiveness as well. And G410 is going to offer that. Yeah, if we, a lot of players know my typical ball flight is more of a, I like to draw the ball a little yeah. bit with, with my irons. So we notice one, two, three, four, all those clubs, notice how it has an owl beside yeah. those numbers. That means the ball was curving to the left. Yeah. What's interesting with the G410 is I couldn't turn that thing over. So it mm -hmm. actually was just flying really, really straight for me. Yeah. So it's not even letting you curve yeah. the ball, right? I mean, it's, this is, and again, you're a player that likes to draw, hit that draw and knows how to hit that draw where a lot of golfers out there that might be watching this aren't going up to their shots trying, oh, I'm going to hit a draw, you yeah. know. Um, they're just trying to hit the ball straight. And the G410 basically forced you to hit the ball straight, um, which you know, I, I know that's going to be music to some of the ears of the, the viewers here because that's all they're trying to do is hit the ball straight, get the ball in the air, going towards the target, which is what the G410 is going to provide. Um, but then, obviously, there are also viewers out there who do want to move the ball, work the ball, um, and do hit the ball solid in the center of the face quite often. That's where you're going to see the benefits more towards uh, I210, iBlade, Blueprint, uh, et cetera, those ones. So, like, I mean, Ping has an, an offering really that's going to work for every type of golfer out there. What I wanted to do real quick is just take a look at this Ping G410. You were talking about how straight I hit it. We'll notice I have that one left the face open. Yeah. If I take that one out, we'll notice how <laughs> basically these things were, I mean, we're talking curving not at all. That's, no curve at that's all. Feet so that's curve, right? that's so, feet of curve, right? That's feet of curve, yep. So that's less than one yard of yeah. curve with, mm -hmm. those, with those four shots. If we look at, if we scroll up slowly, if you're looking at this right column, we'll notice there's some larger numbers with yep. all these other clubs here, just showing the, kind of the, the difference. Then you obviously yeah. you take that one out to the right, notice how straight that was yep. there too. So really interesting there to take a look at that, how right. straight and forgiving mm -hmm. the G4 tennis. Yeah, absolutely. And then even, you notice that too a little bit with the I-500, kind of the same type of concept, but as you get, go, as you move up there, is when you're gonna get more and more workable, you'll see some more of the bigger numbers um, 
yeah, a couple there too with the i210 as well that, you know, if you're looking for the workability, really the i210, iBlade and Blueprint are kind of that player's iron that's gonna let you do that. But then moving on your way down on this list here uh, is when you're gonna get the straighter ball flight and then kind of better performance on miss hits. Um, it's up to the golfers out there really, if you're looking uh, for a ping iron set to come in and get fit and kind of look at these five models and then kind of see from there which one uh, that you fit into the best. Definitely discuss the pros and cons of playing a club that may be a little bit more forgiving or yeah. a little bit less forgiving but may be a little bit workable. So just kind of talk to your fitter about what you're trying to achieve out on the golf course. Yep.